What's up guys, left-handed Jeff back with you here. Another great episode today. We have some killer stuff in store for you. And let me tell you something, we're gonna talk about some things today, including my new baby. Hi girl. Left-handed Jeff back with you, and as I said, we got a great episode for you today. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to answer the most common question that I've been getting so far, which is, what are the toys that make the noise? What's on your wall? Everyone comments, and, and I do appreciate all the great comments, guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's what drives me to keep doing this, and I am, of course, holding my new gorgeous baby here that you saw the, the unboxing for. And, and this is really, this is my favorite piece. This is my piece of a lifetime. This is a PRS, Paul Reed Smith. This is called a custom 24 signature model. Uh, the 24 stands for 24 frets. I'll explain it a little bit later, but many special things about this guitar. 
focus on that little owl right there because that little owl sitting there, that's an owl perched on that 24th fret. There's a cool little story we're gonna tell in just a minute about that. But we're gonna save her for last and we're gonna start over here on the wall. So I've got some, I've got some Just Jams coming up um, unplugged and what they're gonna be is they're gonna be basically some of my original um, and my family's original acoustic material um, because my family roots are, are really deep with acoustic material. I started on acoustic. I played acoustic from five years old, six years old, up until about 11. I never even touched an electric guitar until I was, you know, I've been playing for five or six years. This is a Martin. Uh, it's a reissue from a 1935 Martin. Um, all the specs on it are exact. They age the wood. They have a special process where they age this wood to pre-age it to get that, um, the tone and the sound that, that an acoustic guitar opens up to. It does have the enhanced pickup in here, and a pickup basically is it electrifies the guitar so that I can plug it in. There's a little battery pack here and a plug if you can see that, and that way I can run it through the amplifier system. Um, I'm just gonna play it right now by itself, but here's why I'm a Martin guy. The depth on the bottom end of the Martin, on the lower strings, and when you're sitting in a room with a Martin, a Martin will fill the room up and it has overtones that allows me to play um, open style stuff and the things I like to do on acoustic and it rings and it just like sings forever. So I'm gonna play you a little something to kind of show you what I'm talking about to get that tone. Let's drop D tune it. I like this down too. That's love. If you've watched any of the episodes, you've seen this beauty, which is my PRS SE model. I am obviously a PRS fan. Um, I was a Charvel guy throughout my Bad Axe days, but as I've gotten older, my sound has changed, my kind of vibe has changed a little, so I started exploring. Um, I went out and got the PRS. I got a couple different guitars. I started studying the PRS guitars pretty heavily and to be honest with you, before I, I made the decision to break down and get this the, uh, the custom model, which is, is quite a step up, I spent a good solid year, year and a half with this guitar getting to know it. And as you guys have seen in some of the other Just Jams, this quickly became my favorite. And before I got this one the other day, this is the guitar that I really reached for every time. Beautiful, beautiful guitar. Obviously, you can look at the finish on it, gorgeous. You can still see the owl on the 24th fret. That's how you'll know it's a 24. Standard five-way toggle. I you know, won't go into all that. Actually, this one has a three-way, excuse me. Floyd Rose, Tremelo system. Um, I'll explain that a little bit more on my main guitar, but I, I tend to stick with a Floyd Rose, and there's a reason for that, pretty much because I abuse this whammy bar really bad, <laughs> and the Floyd Rose is the only one that holds up to me. Now, this is the Fender Acoustasonic Telecaster. This came out last year and I pre-ordered it. And 
it was so great because I do speeches all over the place for my other business and I was in Miami doing a speech for my other business and I had a tracking on this and the tracking said it would be here like in two weeks or whatever from that time. And my eldest son, who is a producer, a beat loop producer, things like that, he knew I was, you know, excited about it. And I get a text while I'm sitting in this in this meeting with, you know, it was a very boring meeting, but I get this text from him with a picture of this box. And I'm like, no, no, wait, it showed up. And he's like, yeah, you won't believe it. I was so amazed by the sound of this guitar and it's very lightweight, very unique. Um, I'll be honest with you, it could not be my primary guitar. It, it couldn't be my only guitar. But I really like to have kind of a combination of variety of guitars because each guitar performs its own certain sound, feel, nuance. So anyway, let me play a little bit on it and I'll show you some of the different ways that it sounds because it's so cool. Now I've got it distorted, okay? So I've got it to sound like an electric guitar, but it's an acoustic, so. That tone is incredible. It still gets the acoustic feel, so I can play it like an acoustic and get all that beautiful open. But it's got the electric crunch to it. It's beautiful, I love it, I love it. So let me give you another little sound of it and then we'll move on. This is a cool little machine right here, people. The Fender Acoustasonic Telecaster. And they now also have these in the Acoustasonic Stratocaster. Pretty cool too. Funny story, uh, guys that had strats would always be playing them without an amplifier. It was just like, everybody wanted to play a strat and they just sit around and play without an amplifier. And I, I like to do that too, but the strat would always sound so good and I always wondered why did they you know, want to sit around and play it without an amplifier? Then I actually started getting strats, and I'm like, oh my goodness, it's got such a warm connection without an amplifier that it really, it does something different. It does almost like what an acoustic does, and it makes you realize why the mystery of this Fender Stratocaster and the legend of it, and why so many players throughout history have just been so connected to these guitars and made such special things out of them, so.
Love it. The Fender Stratocaster American Ultra HSS Humbucker Single Single. Gorgeous guitar. It's a shame that I don't have four arms because this would never leave my hands, nor would that. This thing here is like an old pair of boots. This is just the most comfortable, beautiful guitar. It just makes you want to play, makes you want to do old blues. It just makes me want to sit there and, and crawl back to my youth. The Telecaster is the same kind of guitar as the Stratocaster in that regard. So that's a beautiful guitar too. What I'll tell you is this real quickly, is that if I take this guitar, this beautiful Yamaha hollow body, I'm gonna play jazz. This will be for a jazzy, smoother sound. This is set up such, uh, essentially like a Les Paul with a three toggle up top. So you can have your front pick up here for a very warm sound. The middle splits the two, gets a real nice fat, big sound. And the bottom generally would be for your bitey or more solo style sound. I'm definitely gonna do a few tunes with this one as well. This one really gets my heart, but this is a specific style of playing that I only do you know, not that often. So anyway, love this guitar as well. And I want to shout out to my buddy Craig, one of the best luthiers in the world. He took this guitar and just made it the gorgeous machine that it is. So shout out to you, Mr. Moline, Mr. Stereo. Down here on my rack, as I said, I've got a few different things, including, this is my little bass workhorse baby here. Long time ago, I go into a music store I was uh, 17, almost 18. And I played a little bit of bass, but I played bass like in rock bands. But at any rate, so I, I ran across this cat in the bass, uh, in, the, in the music store, and he's going. <laughs> I went, that's the coolest thing I've ever heard. And I'm like, dude, you gotta show me how to do that. So I started studying a bunch of slap and pop bass players and getting into some jazz and funk and fusion and things like that. And really what I like to create, and you guys are gonna see that as we go along with this, I like to create a hybrid of genres. And I'd like to take a, the things that I really love to hear. I love kind of smooth jazz, only not real smooth jazz, but kind of jazzier style music instrumental with real high level guitar players, saxophonists, things like that, bass players. I love the structure of it. It's very, um, it's almost comfort comfortable like pop music or like old rock music would be where the structure is really nice, chorus first, you can hum along with it. But instead of a vocalist, the instrument is playing you know, their, their part. What they don't have in that is that extra little crunch on guitar that I want. Because I come from that rock metal guitar world, I still kind of crave that edge, that, that bitey guitar, that just kick your butt guitar so what I do is I try to create a blending of those two. And there's other people, don't get me wrong, I'm not inventing anything. Many people do the same kind of thing. I go out and seek them out and find them. They're just not the common things that you may know to listen to. So what you'll see over time is that I'm, I use this bass a lot because it's very friendly to my fingers, very friendly for slap and pop. So this bass gets really good sounds. I'll play a little bit for you here and let you just kind of check something out. We won't spend much time on this now, but we will in the future, guys. This is the Ibanez SD Sound Gear, SDGR. Not really an expensive bass, pretty reasonably priced. Um, love the finish on it, very lightweight, very comfortable. Love the guitar. Now, as I'm telling you about her, I'm also going to tell you about my setup and my sound because when we started this adventure, I told you guys what the point of this is, is that we are gonna record, I'm going to record a 10 song instrumental album. It's gonna be primarily a guitar album. There will be other things on it, but pretty much instrumental guitar based album. 
I have already about seven songs that I'm you know pretty secure are going to be going on there. Out of the last four of them, I'm going to kind of loosey-goosey throw ideas out and have the audience kind of suggest and help me mold to what everybody thinks is the coolest thing. But on the 10th song, I want to do a full audience suggested tune where everybody participates. I would even like to try to get some audience members, if I can, to do their own solos and things, send them in and let me mix them and really make a, 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 a project that we did together that we can all say, hey, this was a crowd kind of thing that we all did together. I think it's a super cool idea. I would love to do it. I would love to have it. I'm gonna put this out there for free so everybody will be able to enjoy it. So I think it would be really cool. My first step was to get my sound. And my sound is changed a lot. Um, as I said, when I watched that video coming in, 30 years ago, I used Crate amplifiers and Charvel guitars. It was very common back in the 80s and 90s to have a heavy chorus effect on, which uh, gives it that kind of real studio-fied you know, sound that, that the 80s had with guitar. Now, I, as an older player and also many people, guitarists out there, it's kind of becoming more stripped back down to a, a real raw, pure tone sound, and that's what I'm in it for. This is called the Marshall Blues Breaker, and this is a 1962 reissue. Um, as you can see, I've got two microphones on it. Beneath it, I have a 1964 reissue Marshall 212 cabinet. There are two 12-inch speakers in the amplifier itself. There are two 12-inch speakers in the cabinet below it. I have one microphone on the top cabinet and one microphone on the bottom. They are the exact same matching microphones. They are Shure F SM57s. They're the most pretty much common recording mic there is. Still the top rated mic for a guitar amp recording, um, live recording. The reason I do that is because the bottom cabinet, once you split out of the amplifier and you hook another cabinet into it, it basically allows the amp to get a little bit louder without being so in your face. So you can turn it up a little bit in a smaller studio environment, gets a little bit warmer tone, and a lot of people put both mics on one speaker to get just a mirror image of each other. I like to do the two speakers because I found it gives me a little bigger sound. Then, I go through a series of these pedals to get the actual sound that I want for whatever recording I'm doing. So, what we're gonna do is we are going to spend an entire episode and we're gonna sit down and I'm gonna show you how I'm dialing my sound in for exactly how it's going to work with the recording of the album because we're getting really close to starting that and we're gonna go through the whole pedal board it's pretty common, you can find them on YouTube a lot. They're really fun to go look up. So, other than that, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this girl here. The PRS Custom 24 kind of set the standard for Paul Reed Smith guitars. It's still, to me, uh, and I think to most people, it's still kind of their flagship model. Um, as I said, it does have 24 frets. The owl on the 24th fret is how you know that just by glancing at it couple of special things about this one in particular and I'm not an expert on them at the level of, of you know a lot of people but I do know you know a few things that I think are kind of cool you guys might be interested in number one you see the birds on the frets these birds are very significant and what they are is Paul Reed Smith the man that started this company apparently his mother was a bird watcher and they she took him and his brother out and she was very adamant about them learning all the birds and she was very much into these birds and so that was a huge part of his life. So when he made his first guitar in homage to his mother, he put birds on the neck, on the frets, and he chose different birds for every fret and the birds are also in positions and in flight and in motion that is relative to where they are on the fretboard. So back to our owl sitting here on the 24th fret. Obviously that's the highest fret on the guitar and it's re really hard to get to and there's like you gotta play solos up here and stuff. I feel like that little bird's like judging me. I feel like he's staring at me every time I come up to that 24th fret. A couple of other things I like about this guitar, everything I like about this guitar, but a couple of other really cool things. 
I don't know if you can see or not, but the knobs are recessed just a little bit. And it's just slight enough to make it totally comfortable with the cut here for your hand. And I do a lot of volume knob work with my whammy bar and opening and closing the volume knob to get certain effects. And it makes it so much easier. And the other thing they do is that knob is not round. It actually has little lines on it and those make it really easy and accurate to reach in there and to just get it feather fine touch. It looks super cool and it almost has this retro kind of 60s, 70s, 50s almost radio look to it. The Floyd Rose tail piece, like I said, is a standard for me. This has double humbucker pickups. These are, like I said, the rock style pickups, but because of this switch, this is actually a five position switch. This switch allows me to split these so that I can literally turn the switch and instead of having this together working as one getting a real crunchy sound, I can split them to where it works as two singles. And it gets that same kind of bitey sound that the Fender does, which I'll show you. For me personally, this guitar can do what every other guitar can do. I've never had one guitar that if I reach for a sound, if I try to get a sound, uh, something out of it, I can find a setting on it and that guitar just delivers to me. And honestly, that's why I reach for it every time. So this is my girl, this is my baby, and, and I think she looks pretty cool. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I can't believe how much I love this piece of wood. But, guys, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for tuning in every single week. We have some really special stuff coming up. Wait a sec. I think you know what the music means. It's time already to wrap this puppy up. Like I said, guys, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. And ring that bell to get all the notifications. Because when we hit 1,000, we're giving away that Simmons drum kit. And did I forget anything? These guys. Well, I think you heard it at the beginning of the episode, but I'm going to tell it to you again because it's got to be said. You can take the toys that make the noise, but you can't change Mother Nature.